Hello, I'm Michael Byron. And I'm Marilyn Nonkin. Uh, we will be premiering my new work for two pianos, The Ultraviolet of Many Parallel Paths at Roulette, uh, which was commissioned by Roulette with support from the David Sylvia Teitelbaum Foundation, to whom I'm grateful. For our performance on November 2nd, I'll be joined by fantastic pianist Joseph Cubera, a longtime interpreter of Michael Byron's music. And we are so thrilled that this epic work uh, was written for us uh, by Michael Byron. And we are deep in the heart of rehearsals as we speak. The idea for this came to me after uh, composing my hour-long Dreamers of Pearl, which is recorded on New World Records, and it was uh, dedicated to pianist Joseph Burra, who is my longtime collaborator. Uh, I'm very lucky now to have uh, Marilyn Nunkin join us. Between the two of them, they are easily the finest uh, polyrhythmic pianists uh, at least in New York and probably elsewhere. This work uh, is very intense, uh, quite beautiful in the way that I think of beauty. It explores ergodic forms, stochastic processes, and uh, uh, deeply felt beliefs about beauty and and duration. It was written entirely in the New York Public Library on 42nd Street. Uh, since I use neither keyboard nor computer, uh, there was a reading room that I particularly liked, and uh, the library was very friendly about this, and I, so I spent about a year or so uh, sitting in that reading room writing this piece. Later, um, I copied it onto a, uh, a music notation program. Uh, it's structured in two movements, each about 23 or 24 minutes long, depending on the uh, uh, tempo at which it's played. And they are, uh, as I like to say, Beethoven tempos. They're quite brisk. As a, as a performer, it's a very, very different thing working with another pianist, and I've had the opportunity uh, to work on a lot of different kinds of uh, works for two pianos, and, and sometimes a composer will really see the two pianos as having different personalities or different material, each one, and they sort of complement each other in different ways. Um, and in this work, it's really different because we do have material that's constantly intertwined, that shares characteristics that's incredibly closely related and is meant to sound you know, like a single like single organism or a sort of seamless environment. Um, and I think that takes a really particular kind of balance uh, between the two players. It takes a lot, of, a lot of rehearsal and also I think a certain kind of simpatico relationship between the two players. There's really not another uh, pianist that I could see doing this piece with rather than Joe, also because he's so experienced and has played so much of Michael's music that he's he speaks it really fluently. He speaks in that language, and that's something that I can uh, mimic and work on and uh, use to inform how I'm playing. So I think there's a little bit of this uh, modeling our performances on one another, and I think to, to do that and feel comfortable working that closely, it does take a particularly close kind of relationship, whereas when you're performing a solo piece, you know, you're the master of your own domain and you don't need to appeal to, to anyone else. So um, I think uh, it, it requires a certain kind of shared sentiment and, and intimacy. In my work, there is no difference between form and content. My, uh, my uh, instructions to myself are simply do what you have to do but do it quickly. And so I, I don't take time. Once I start a piece, I never let go of that initial idea. Now, I'm also very interested in what the brain is capable of perceiving, which is a finite amount of variable information. Uh, 
so that we can focus on isolated uh, events uh, and maximize the variability in those. There are as many ways to write music as there are people and as many fascinations with sounds as there are people. Uh, my music, uh, although uh, sounding quite different from one piece to the next, has the same aesthetic principles of, uh, uh, of, of beauty, whether in a more abstract sense or in the classical sense that we might be able to agree on. Um, when Michael says it has a certain kind of beauty, it really does. It has a beauty of virtuosity and it creates this environment, um, which as he says, it's not just uh, uh, one piano or two pianos or an interaction like a dialogue or a conversation, but we create this, uh, we create this world, we create this environment that has much more like a landscape so it's a, it's a work of this profundity and a certain kind of extreme duration and density that I think really renders it a unique experience to listen to and uh, for me as well to play and, and to be a part of. And another thing that's just very exciting about this upcoming performance is working with Joe again. We've worked together on and off for about probably close to 15 years now. Yeah. We worked on Christian Wolf, Larry Polanski, we've gone back and forth and we've wanted to do this piece even since before he wrote it. So it's, um, you know, it's this wonderful experience of, again, for, for me getting to work with Joe, I think in many ways we're different kinds of players and we come from different generations or different backgrounds, different approaches to the score. Uh, but when we work together, I think, it's as Michael says, there's a kind of synergy or synthesis mm -hmm. um, and you know that's something that I think is um, for me as a player it's, it's really rewarding and I think it produces a, a very special kind of performance that goes with a very unique kind of music. Hearing Michael talk about writing it, it makes me aware also of this physicality and virtuosity of composition. I remember Michael telling me at Cafe Dante how he does all this by hand oh, yeah. and without yeah. calculators and... Uh, I'm, you and know, I'm so 19th century. That's right. So manuscript paper and pencil very and, retro. A lot of, and a lot of erasers. That's a very old school <laughs> and there's that whole physicality of composition, um, really a, a craftsmanship that I think that when Joe and I perform this piece, you know, we also do this with our hands. This becomes a very handmade and hand wrought piece, uh, you know, on the side of the composition and the side of the realization. And I, I think that's very much how I think of Michael Byron as a craftsman, that there still is something very, very handmade about this, about this piece that, that's very special. Thank you. You know, that's a very generous thing to say. And, uh, and this is why they, I, I, Marilyn and, Joe know more about this piece at this juncture than I do. Um, they analyze, they scrutinize, uh, and uh, they uh, go forward endlessly towards uh, the realization of this of this image, of this obsessive image that we can't let go of. Uh, people all, often ask me how my titles are relevant to the music itself. And uh, uh, they're uh, uh, unabashedly sentimental and uh, are part of my fantasy about the, that image. I think back to uh, Varez after he wrote his first piece in, in America, Amérique. And he says, and I quote, a purely sentimental title.